Hello everyone and welcome to my favourite materials. They look a little bit boring now but I'll get them looking exciting for you later on. So I said in this video I would just go over my favourites. I have a lot of other materials that I bring in and use in my work like occasionally but I said I would narrow this one down to just like my go-to's. So I have one of everything and I said I would walk you through it and show you what I like about them. So strap in if you're interested in seeing what materials I use day to day. So let's get into it. Sorry for the crap lighting, I'll try and make it brighter. And sorry for the state of my desk, it's very messy. So I said the first thing I would start with would be sketchbooks. So two sketchbooks that I enjoy. The first, this is the last blank sketchbook I have of it. I got them from the US. They are the Stramor, uh, can you see that? The Stramor, they're the mixed media sketchbooks. I will maybe go back to this at some point, but these are very difficult to get in Ireland, so it's not something I kind of will use as standard, but I'm including it in this video because I really like them as sketchbooks. I think the paper is so nice to work on. It's quite thick. It has really good capabilities for layer and mixed media over, so I think that's what I like the most about this one. The downsides to it are, one, I can't get them easily here, so I am not going to bother with them. And two, I don't like that they are not a standard A size, because that makes it difficult for me to kind of crop and everything my artwork into prints. So it's what, that's what puts me off this one. But if you're someone who lives in a country where these are easier to access and you don't really care about making prints in standard A sizes, then go for it. I would definitely recommend this. I think it's very, very nice to work on, but that's why I'm not gonna continue working on it. The one that I use more frequently now is the Royal Talons Art Creation Sketchbooks. Let me try and get it in the light. You can see, yeah, the Royal Talons Art Creation Sketchbook. These are lovely. I really like them. The paper is definitely thinner and they're an off-white colour. I like that they're off-white because I, I just kind of like a little bit of tone in my pages. They do handle mixed media very well. I work back to back in pages. Obviously, you can see this was a very dark page. But nothing is showing up here where I use very light colours. I enjoy them. I think they're nice, fun, fun sketchbooks. And they're also very cheap for me to get and you can get a lot of different sizes of them. This one, for all I said about the last one, this isn't a standard A5 size, but it's quite close, so I like that. They're also hardback, so if I'm taking them out in location, they're not gonna get squished in my bag. This is a, another different size of one, just to give you an example of different sizes, and you can get them in the big A4 ones too. This is one that my dog chewed up, so it's now a crappy doodly sketchbook that I'm not gonna put too much hold on, so I'm gonna leave that there so that we can test out some of the materials I talk about. Next is paintbrushes. I am not particular about my paintbrushes at all. I tend to get just cheap ones from an online art shop based in Dublin. These are the two paintbrushes that I use in, I think, every single one of my pieces I've made that you see on Instagram in here. The paint is faded off them here, but these are Richard Oliver Ireland paintbrushes. I get them from Evans Art Shop up in Dublin. So I am not sure as to the availability of these outside of Ireland, considering that they're made here. I, I just really like them. These are two new ones versus two old ones. It's just a standard round brush and a standard flat brush. These are what I mainly use. Every single painting I do, it's these two that I use. This is for big mark making and filling in spaces. And then this one is for rounder little details and kind of flowy lines. If you don't have these, then I would say any standard round and flat brush would do. If you are in Ireland, it is the Richard Oliver 600 and 601. There we go. Uh, and this is a half an inch, and this is just a round little taper tip. The other Richard Oliver one that I use uh, is this kind of natural, I don't know what kind of, you know, material this is. Feels like it's maybe like boar or something, natural sort of hair. It's a one inch brush. You can see it has a lot of like bristles. 
and I like this one for making big textured marks. That's what I really enjoy using this one for. And then these two are two cheap ones. Um, they're synthetic and they are the one and two inch Sino Art. Sino Art. I can't remember where I got these from, but they are very cheap synthetic brushes that I also use for if I'm doing big like A2 size, if I have an A3 sketchbook and open up A2 size. I will use these to lay down big marks. And I really enjoy using them for that. So I'm gonna take you and zoom you in here and we're gonna go in and I'm gonna show you what these brushes look like when I put color down and also what paints I like so you can see the color when it goes down. For my palette, it's literally just a tin from pencils that I got when I was really young and I used these to draw sparkle dogs. If you're of that generation, you'll know what I'm on about. So this is my gouache palette. So this is what I use to mix all my gouache on. And then just a cup for water and my nasty towel for wiping paint on. I'll show you what all these brushes look like when they're being used. So paints, let's get into it. For my paints, there are three brands that I like the most and then there's kind of one of them has two different kinds. So the gouache that I started off with is the Winsor & Newton designer gouache. This is the first kind of proper gouache I would have used. I bought an Arteza set off of Amazon, I think, when I had a voucher from my old job for Amazon, but I, I don't really like those. And I also prefer not to buy sets and to buy just individual colors of colors that I know I use. Like, I think if you're, if you want to buy a set of colors, you can, but I think the most important thing is that you have your primaries, your yellow, blue, and red, and then a warm and a cool tone on both of those. You can build off that and get colors that you know you, you will use a lot. Once you're kind of comfortable in your art and you know what colors you use, you can buy pre-mixed versions of them. So the Winsor Newton designer gouache is nice. I don't have any complaints about it. I think it's fun, it re-wets okay. It's not grainy. There's some paints that I use that are grainy. These ones are ones that I didn't include in my favorites because I have them and I'm using them up, but I don't like them. They're very, they have a very grainy texture and I don't like that about them. So mm, those aren't as fun, but these ones are nice and pigmented and they're smooth. So would recommend these. Then another gouache that I've tried only recently is the Holbein, Holbein, Holbein uh, Artist Squash. Uh, I got this from Jackson's Art and Windsor Newton is available kind of in my, like my local art shop. So that's why I started with this one. I don't think these are available in my local shops, I'm not sure. But these are also very nice. I can't really say much difference in them. Um, I have feel like I haven't been using them enough to notice a difference between the Windsor and Newton, but I'd say it doesn't really matter which one you get. These, these ones just had some colors that I preferred than the Windsor and Newton ones. So that's why I got some different colors in them and to test them out. But yeah, I'd, I'd recommend both of these for sure. Then for other kinds of gouache, we have acrylic gouache. So these are acrylic gouaches. So these ones, obviously these are water-based. I can take the dried blobs on my palette and re-wet them. But then for acrylic gouache, I can't. You, you're stuck with what you have, it'll dry up and then you're done. So I feel like whenever I use acrylic gouache, I have to sparingly put out only tiny, tiny pieces. So I like the Turner acrylic gouache. I have used the Holbein acrylic gouache and I just don't like it as much. I I feel it's a little bit too transparent nearly. I don't know. I'm just not a fan of it. I definitely prefer the Turner acrylic gouache. So there's two different kinds within the Turner gouache, the acrylic gouache that I use. And this is just a regular one. It's acrylic gouache with dry almost shiny, not very matte, um, because of it's acrylic based. And then you have the Turner Japanesque acrylic washes. And these ones, they're same as acrylic wash regular ones, but they dry matte and with a little bit of a texture on, it's almost like 
pastel sort of a texture. I gave out about the Senelier ones being grainy, but that was grainy in that you could see like, you know, the pigment was really uneven. But these ones, the pigment will be even, but there'll be just a nice texture on top of it. And I find that because I usually layer pencils and mixed media on top of my paints, I prefer the Japanesque ones for that reason because of the matte. It's a lot easier to layer pencils over, whereas with this regular one, sometimes it can be a bit shiny and it might kind of slide off. The pencils will kind of slide off it and they won't deposit as much pigment. So that's why I prefer the Japanesque colors. So I'm gonna show you now. Go and take my Richard Oliver round brush. Look at that, I already got paint all over me. And I'm gonna take some of this Winsor Newton yellow. Yeah, oh, that's this one here. Dab a tiny bit, and that's the nice thing. I can dab some, come back to it later, and re-wet it. So I really like that aspect of it. So I'll just wet my brush, take some of this. And I will show you. So that's it there. So you can get really fine little tiny little details on this one I find. Even though it's quite like a fat brush. I remember someone commented on one of my videos, they were like, wow, you're so rough with your brushes. I was like, am I? I didn't realize I was rough with my brushes. But to be fair, I think I treat them quite well because whenever I dry them, you know, I'll, I'll round off the tip. Um, but yeah, I picked up some green there. That's not the true color of that one. So that's our Windsor and Newton gouache. I'm gonna put that there. I have shock in handwriting, don't be offended by how illegible it is. Next one is the Holbein Artist Squash. So I'm gonna do a little bloop on that. I love this, this color opera. It's like my favorite bright pink. I really am a big fan of using bright pink, both in underpaintings and on its own. And also I like mixing it with the yellow. It'll create a really nice like orangey color that I think mimics kind of like sunsets, a nice like peachy pink kind of sunset color. So that's this is the half inch flat Richard Oliver Ireland brush. So I'll show you. That's it. And it adds these really nice. So if you see me doing this, uh, you can use it like dry brushing. This is quite wet here, so I won't. Um, so you can mix it. That's what I kind of mean about the nice like peachy pink. You can do little dupes of things. I'll try and make this a little bit drier and show you what the dry brushing looks like with it. Just dab a little bit, dab some off. So separate the bristles a little bit. You can see that. And I'm gonna... So that's how I create those really nice, fun, loopy loopy textures. To be fair, I think these are very easily matched. They're not. There's no crazy difference in them. I think they're not sure about the price of them. I can't remember. <laughs> and, um, I'm pretty certain they're not. They're not like an extortionate difference in the price. And obviously that depends where you're based and what we're getting them from. And this is the whole bean. That's the whole bean gosh. So that's those two. And then for these two, we are gonna go in with the Turner acrylic wash. I don't want to put acrylic wash on this palette. I have a acrylic wash palette, but I'm just gonna plop it directly on the page here so you can see. So this is the Sino Art, the really cheap synthetic. The thing I don't like about this is that you can't get the texture that you get with this, but for just laying down flat colors, it's quite, quite fun. So that's it dry. I'm gonna add some water to this. I tend to be quite thick with my paint layers, so that is why I find they sometimes dry a little bit shiny, but if you are thin with them, they'll thin out. They won't be as shiny like this. This part up here will dry and it'll be quite shiny. 
and then final paint is the Japanesque and this is one of my favorite colors in it. it is the Japanesque blue gray so you'll see like J blue gray that's you know it's like the Japanesque ones with a different texture and then I'm gonna go in here with this brush straight away you see so crunchy really fun I love doing that with it. then I'm gonna go in here with this one so this one isn't this brush the Richard Oliver one inch kind of um bristly brush is not as good for layer and down paint it's definitely what I'd use to only like add texture over top like that love that um for sketching this is just a 4b pencil i don't know what this brand is it's just one that i picked up at an art shop it's 4b pencil i like soft pencils to sketch so markers i kind of only use two those are the tombow the ecoline brush pens they're both brush pens but the tombow has a little tip like that and then these ones are the ecoline and that is their brush tip the Ecoline are refillable. I don't believe the Tombows are refillable. I don't think they are. But that is their brush tip also. I think I tend to lean towards the Tombow because I feel like the Ecoline sometimes take a very long time to dry. But I do like the Ecoline. They're very nice pens. That's like three or four layers and you've got all pilling happening. And then you have your Tombow. which I think some pinning is off. I have a preference for the Tombow because I find in general they're less rough on my paper than the Ecoline. But as you can see, they both cause pinning. We'll use Tombow generally to go over work I have done already. So like you can see here, I'll go over it. It's like nice, kind of pinky purpley color. The Ecoline, I will tend to use it to fill in backgrounds as opposed to going over stuff. I don't know why I have that preference. I think I prefer these because they're just that big bigger, cover bigger areas with the brush tip and then these ones are a little bit more dainty. Pencils. I get this question so much and it's like, what pencils do you use? And the answer is a few different ones. Nearly in every piece that you see me doing, I will have three or four different brands of pencils used. My top two would be will be an artist coloured pencil. I started using them this year and I really enjoy them. They have really lovely colours in these ones. And then these are the luminance pencils. So these two would be my go-to. They're dear pencils so I won't deny that. Another one, this was chewed by some cats, I do believe, or maybe my dog. These are the Prismacolor Premier pencils. These were my first kind of like, you know, proper coloured pencils. I'm not the biggest fan of them. I think they don't show up as well as the luminance and I don't like the fact that I find they're very fragile. Now, this is a good one, but I find sometimes you can get bad ones where the nibs will just constantly break and you'll like be to here and you'll only have used barely any of the pencil, but it's like every time you set it down to paper, it'll snap. So that's what I don't like about them. Um, I don't find they layer as well as the other two. And then <clears throat> these last ones, uh, which aren't a colour pencil per se, they're the Conte à Paris or Conte à Paris. Um, I've butchered that name, so I apologise in advance for all my French speaking followers. <laughs> I took French in school, but uh, I did not do well in it. <laughs> Um, these are pastel pencils, so they are not regular coloured pencils, they're pastel pencils. These will layer beautifully over paint, but they will not layer over existing coloured pencils. So I'll show you the Prismacolor. So this is, these are all blue shades. So this is it over. You can see that's not really showing up at all, nearly, barely. And then this is it over some nice pinks. That's showing up nicely there, actually. And then our yellows. And then on top of this blue, it's okay. It just do it struggles against the darker colors, I find, which some of my other pencils don't do as much. I'll do the pastel pencil next. Like I said, you'll see there, that doesn't layer over color pencils at all. It will go, stop, go. So any kind of like a waxy kind of covering at all, it won't but it will layer lovely over paints. 
and you get great texture with it. I really, I really like these. I bought these just on a whim, randomly, from uh, an art shop locally. Because I was like, ooh, these sound nice because I love layering pastels. And they were, they were really nice. I bought a few of them since. And then you'll see there, it's layering over them. You can see it layers really nicely over that darker colour as well. Next is the whole bean ones. Sorry, I didn't show these layered over the markers. I it on the Ecoline, I it on the Tombow. I find there's no real issue with layering on these because it's essentially like watercolour and they're quite easy to layer over. So this is a lighter colour. I love this colour so much. I love the colours of the whole bean pencils. That's, I, I think these have really gorgeous, unique colours in them. So we'll go down. This is a bit, they're softer. They're definitely softer. You can see it like crumbling. I'm gonna go for that. And see there, like that's a that's darker than it, but you can it shows up quite well. Maybe not in this lighting. Um I don't I think the lighting isn't lending itself well here, but I'll try and zoom you in, you can see. These are quite similar in colour. So that's the whole bean. That's the prisma colour. That's the pastel. So I think they do layer nicely. And then we have the luminance, which are also really nice. They're just also quite expensive. That's it layered over a prisma colour, which is nice. Uh, it goes lovely over these ones. Nice and dark over that one. Bum bum. Again, goes really well over this and then goes really well over this dark one also. And it will layer on top of the uh, pastel pencils. So I'll zoom you in and let you see everything near this done. So here we have the pastel pencil, the whole bean, the luminance and the Prismacolor. And then here, whole bean, whole bean, whole bean, luminance, pastel, and then Prismacolor. You can see Prismacolor kind of did the worst out of layering on the darker. This is a Prismacolor with luminance over it and the pastel going over them. This is everyone layered over the Tombows. I think they all did fine there. And then these two washes, I think everything layers over pretty well there. Next pastels of varying textures. These are the Neo Colors. The wax pastel. These are water soluble. They layer over everything fairly decently. To be fair, I don't think I can complain. They lay over pencil, wash. Next one, oil pastels. These are the Mongyo Gallery oil pastels. I will use these a lot. Like details over the top of a painting. I think they add really great texture. And then sometimes you can use this flat end and drag it over like that and you get really nice textures like that. Love that. So yeah, these are these are great. I think they're relatively cheap as well. And then unfortunately I tried the expensive ones and I love them also. These are the Sennelier Artist Oil Pastels and these are very soft, really like buttery smooth. Oh they're so nice. I love the, I love using them. That's it going across all those ones. And again, lovely texture. I have no complaints about these ones. It's only that they're expensive and I really want all of them, but uh, they're very dear. Next, we're on to soft pastels. So I have three kinds that I use. These are, oh my gosh, what are these called? I think they're the Uni soft pastels. This is the landscape set. These are nice, soft ones. I'll use them as not on their side for nice texture. And I like these a lot. And then these are the Jackson's soft pastels. Uh, also really like these ones. Like I love, look at that, such a bright pink. <laughs> I love it so much. And then my new love of this year is the pan pastels. I really like these. These are stupid expensive. I, was, I bought like three and then they're like 10 euro each or something. I bought three of them and then I asked for these for Christmas presents this year for the rest because they're too expensive. So that's this layer down. Let's see if we can mix it with this one. Yeah. I really, I love these. I think they're very nice to like 
say this is you can make that sky so much moodier if this was say this is the sky you can layer them up make them darker and darker and darker you can mix them i just i'm a big fan of layer and texture over my stuff so i really liked going in with these they just like if you do like a wash of these over something it'll add just such a lovely kind of like moody grainy texture to it i really liked them that's it those are all of my favorites and just to show you this paper nothing came through we've layered loads of different materials and stuff i hope you found that interesting and informative what i didn't include here was things i use less frequently like my oil paints every day if i was maybe i'll do a video on what i use for my oil paints but i feel like they're just not day-to-day -day what you see in my art so i didn't include them here because they're not representative of kind of my general illustrations hope you liked it hope you got some nice shiny new ideas if you like me and you want to stick around and see more please do like and subscribe Please do stick around if you want to see more of my art and my process and my materials. Leave a comment as to what you have tried and what you're interested in trying again because I'd love to hear that. Or materials you think I would like because the state of my hands after this one video. I'm, I'm terrible for being so messy all the time. Thank you so much. I will see you again in my next video. Bye.